This is a shaved fennel salad with garlic, a little bit of lemon juice, olive oil, and salt. And it has some chiffonade of basil on top and some Parmesan cheese. And we're using the fronds from the actual fennel to actually decorate the dish. All right, if you don't make this, you're missing out. I'm gonna show you how to make this shaved fennel salad right now. I want to tell you a little bit about the fennel. This is the fennel. Now, this can be enjoyed raw or cooked. That's a great thing. All of it is edible. And you'll see this at the store. And it comes with the little fronds and these little, like, alien type little, like, little bulb sticks that come out. And all of this is edible. You want to look for when you're at the store is that it's, you know, green, that it's crisp, and that it isn't soft, that it's very firm and it doesn't have any brown spots on it. That's the first thing. We're gonna cut this tip off right here. Cut off the fronds, I'm gonna set these to the side. The other way that you can enjoy this, slice it and then roast it with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper, and it kind of transforms itself into this like silky, soft, great mouthfeel deliciousness. It's really amazing. Fennel is interesting. It's part of the parsley and carrot family. This is related to flavors like of like cumin or dill or caraway seeds. Basil goes well with this, mint goes well with this. It really pairs well with a lot of different things. So once you learn what things have an affinity for a particular ingredient, you can become freer in the kitchen. One thing about the mandolins, you wanna be careful. If you have a guard, you should use the guard. And then you wanna set this to like the paper's thin setting that you can get it you'll have beautiful transparent pieces of fennel that'll be fantastic when you make the salad. If you don't have a mandolin, cut the fennel in half and you'll have to slice it by hand. Pieces like this, don't throw them away. Just kind of like chop them up really little. We're gonna set the fennel to the side and we're gonna grab a zester. It really does a really nice job. So you wanna get one or two pieces of garlic and then you wanna zest it. Like almost grates it really, really tiny and small. This is like a nice way of introducing uh, raw garlic to a dish, a raw salad that you're not gonna cook and have the garlic really expand its flavor throughout the dish. And then we're gonna get the juice of one lemon. And I'm gonna use my hand to catch the seeds. I love that sound, that squishy sound that a lime or lemon makes when you're squeezing out the liquid. I don't know, it's just like this. One of the things I love about fennel is that it has sort of like a little bit of a history. Back in the day, it, in ancient China, they would say that fennel would have like some magic remedy for snake bites. And also, in the Middle Ages, they would put it over their doorways to keep away like evil spirits. I don't use it for evil spirits. I just use it for eating, because I like eating. So we have the garlic in here, and we have lemon juice. Now we're gonna put in the fennel. We're gonna do the herbs, and you can use fresh herbs, you can use dry herbs. Now let me tell you this little thing that chefs know. If you see a recipe that says a tablespoon of fresh herbs, you need one teaspoon of dried herbs. And the reason is that dried herbs are much more potent because they're dried out, so you need less of it. The other thing you need to remember too is that if you're gonna be cooking, it's always hard to remove flavor, but it's much easier to add. So it's better if you're kind of, oh, I don't really know how to, how much dry them, just put a little bit, and if you need more, you can always add more. But once you put that dill or basil or mint inside that dish, that's it. You're, you're not gonna get rid of anything. So we're gonna do a chiffonade, and the chiffonade is just um, a specialized cut, precision cut, that kind of cuts um, an herb into a ribbon or cuts something into a ribbon form. So you want to load them up on top of each other and then there's different ways to, you know, fold them. Some people fold them in a cigar. I just fold it in half and then I'm going to cut it. Chefs don't always memorize every recipe because they don't, they memorize ratios. So for this vinaigrette, you might wonder how do chefs know like how to make it and it tastes good. You want to remember the ratio whenever you're making any vinaigrette. The ratio is three to one, meaning three parts oil and one part vinegar or acid. When you're doing a vinaigrette, you need to balance the pH of the whole dish. So the acid that's in here is lemon juice. 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. The next thing you're gonna add is the grated Parmesan cheese. And you can use fresh, or you can use the stuff that comes in that green little container box. Now you're gonna taste it to see if the pH is correct. The pH, what pH is, is in cooking is when something is very salty or very acidic or vinegary or lemony. In this case, lemon. So I'm gonna taste it to make sure. It's a little acidic. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. I'm gonna mix it again. And this is how you make your own vinaigrette at home and make sure that it tastes good just for you. Don't add more oil if it's you know, lemony or too vinegary, you wanna add salt. Okay, now the basil lemon is nice and bright. Taste the basil. All right, now we just have to smash it with a little black pepper. Just some nice peppery notes. Then at the end, you're gonna drizzle some of the lemon vinaigrette that you've made pour it all over just like that. Mm -hmm. This is really good. I'm telling you, I wouldn't turn my nose down at this. You gotta make this sound. And this will make a great accompaniment. So I don't care what you make. Fish, pork, beef. This is delicious.